John McMullen covers the NFL long time, covers the league, covers the Eagles for 97.3 ESPN.com. We do football at 4, and we'll talk some draft, talk some NFL now with John McMullen here on the Boardwalk on the Hotline. Now, John, we had a we had a little conversation before you came on. Do you check your voicemail? Now, I would assume you're a voicemail checker because you're a guy getting information. Yeah, I, I have to check my voicemails. I don't like to. I prefer when people text, but every every once in a while, somebody wants to have uh, their you, voice heard for some reason. John, are you a voicemail lever? Uh, I try not to be. I, I try to be a texter or an emailer. Mark Cuban taught me that, of all people. Mark Cuban will not talk to you unless you email him. So I, I subscribe hmm. to that theory. The email is the modus operandi for yeah, it's number one. Cuban? Cubes? Well, that was. <laughs> I don't know what it is now. It might have shifted to, to text, but back in the day, you had to email gotcha. them. Uh, and I agree with them. It should be email or text. That way you can get the information and, and get on to the next thing. Uh, and I always feel like the email is antiquated. Though. Yeah, a little bit. Right? I feel like the yeah, text message is, is antiquated the email. Yeah, well, like I said, this is back when I was in the NBA, covering the NBA. So it's been years. I, I imagine he shifted to, to text. Uh, and that's the quickest way, the best way. Uh, and uh, that's the way I advocate for everybody. All right, John, a couple things before we get to the draft. Tim Jernigan is back with the Philadelphia Eagles, ranked six among D tackles with a career-high nine tackles for losses two years ago. He had uh, a couple of sacks last year in the Eagles playoff games. I mean, he was a productive guy, went healthy and played. We didn't think he'd be back, number one. How'd they get him back? And what? Uh, let's read the tea leaves on why he's back and what it could mean tonight. Yeah, I thought it was. I think the timing's important. I think it was an interesting curveball to start out the day from Howie Roseman. I think it's an indication of they're trying to fool other people. Whether it's we're not going to take a defensive tackle, but they're really going to take Jeffrey Simmons if he's there, or if it's a clear indication they want Marquise Brown. And now, as we get closer and closer. And the clouds start lifting, and, it, hey, both of those players would seem to be the top two uh, choices uh, for the Eagles. They might not be there at 25 because the Ravens have significant interest in Marquise Brown. They're at 22. Uh, and the Miami Dolphins, they might, they might get into Jeffrey Simmons' business early at 13, especially uh, if they're as heavy in on Josh Rosen as I think they are. Yeah, you know, a lot of people thought defensive or interior defensive line for the Eagles, and then you bring Jernigan back, and obviously uh, they brought Malik uh, Jackson in earlier uh, in the offseason. So do we feel that they now are feeling secure about that position and maybe can focus on something else tonight? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it impacts that position either way as far as them drafting someone if someone uh, gets the 25 uh, because it's, it's a one-year sub-package guy. Uh, so you're going to quickly move on uh, from Tim Jernigan. In fact, you know, when I first heard the news, I was like a lot of people, and I said, well, they don't need the defensive tackle. But then when I started to think about it, this probably makes it even more, uh, it, I, at least a little bit easier to take a Simmons, who, remember, is going to be a redshirt player uh, coming off a torn ACL. So now you don't have to worry uh, about having a contributor because you have Tim Jernigan back for, for one year. So that might be part of what Howie Roseman is doing uh, to be able to take a player like Jeffrey Simmons. Yeah, and you tweeted this out about 45 minutes ago, John. Latest whip whispers, if Eagles want Marquise Brown, they might have to jump above the Ravens at 22 to get it done. And we talked a little bit about, you know, how he, if there's somebody they want to trade up for, if they have to jump over 22, would they 
in your mind, say, you know what, we really take him if he's there at 25? Well, I, I mean, again, it's about the player. And it, it's certainly not about the position because they wouldn't consider moving up uh, for any other uh, receiver. So it, it's not about position when it's Marquise Brown. It's about the player uh, and the impact they think he can have uh, on this particular offense. And that's what you got to weigh. Is it worth giving up another con- a potential contributor uh, down the line, if you have to jump up to 21, obviously you have to give something up. Uh, or do you swallow and say, uh, leave the Ravens to their devices? I mean, Baltimore might be like everybody else. And, and, and you know, seeing what happened in the last few days and uh, trying to play their own games and, and using some gamesmanship as well. So that's kind of give and take of the draft. and. Uh, the final hours, uh, everybody trying to get out different information uh, for their own purposes. So it really, if the Eagles really want the kid, they might have to go up and get him. John, when I run through each position, it, it's tough to find, in my opinion, a, a legitimate need. Yes, a lot of positions are aging, like we're talking about the wide receiver position, and you look at Jackson and you look at uh, Alshon Jeffrey, who are both over the age of 30 in the NFL. That's You might as well have a cane and be cashing out your 401K at that point. But, you know, every other position is essentially set in some way, if not veterans and somewhat depth. That leaves me with the offensive line. Like, you just got rid of Nick Foles. You have Carson Wentz, and we all know the narrative and the injuries that are legitimate concerns with him. In my mind, doesn't it seem a little bit of a reach to go anywhere but an offensive lineman? Well, no. I I mean, the Eagles have done a really good job uh, about acquiring Band-Aids and and not having that absolute need uh, to being forced to do something. I mean, their biggest need is probably linebacker. Uh, And closely tied to that would be running back, even with the addition uh, of Jordan Howard. Uh, And and they got L.J. Ford at linebacker. Safety, they got Andrew Sandeo. Uh, Defensive tackle, we just mentioned not only Jernigan, but Malik Jackson. And and you mentioned offensive line, which is uh, a legitimate need for down the road. Obviously, Jason Peters, likely his last year. Problem there is a similar problem uh, to, to Marquise Brown, to perhaps Jeffrey Simmons. Who are you going to take? Uh, the three top tackles, they're off the board. Uh, they could potentially all go top 10. Uh, I would say the floor would be 12 uh, for those three. Uh, and then you talk about Cody Ford. He might not get to 25. So then you have to start talking about interior linemen, and there's some good ones there as well. Uh, Garrett Bradbury could be the heir apparent to Jason Kelsey, Chris Lindstrom, who the Eagles like. Uh, but it's, it's not a tackle. And if you want that fourth tackle, maybe a Titus Howard type, then you got to think about trading down if you want to go in that direction. Mm, it, it, all right, so give me. I'm going to give you two different scenarios here. If the Eagles are, if their game plan going into tonight and the draft, but specifically tonight because it's the first round, if they're going in it with a win now mode, meaning we want a guy that can get on the field this year and help us as much as possible, who do you think that they should get or would get? And then on the flip side of that, if they're going strictly off of long term, he might not see the field for a couple years, and he's the best talent available. What name sticks out to you there? First uh, would be Marquise Brown. That would be undoubtedly a big part of this offense and open up a lot of things that they don't have right now, uh, especially when you talk about the modern NFL, jet sweeps, orbit motion, all those kinds of things that open that uh, in the playbook. And you can see from Kansas City uh, with Tyreek Hill that Doug Peterson would like to add some of that uh, into his offense. Long term, it's, it's Simmons. I mean, that's a top 10 guy. He'd be a top 10 pick. 
He's not going to play this year. But can you imagine him next to Fletcher Cox next year? Uh, I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. Uh, I'm talking with John McMullen, the draft tonight. You can listen to it at 8 o'clock, 97.3 ESPN. Um, all right, so the mock draft, lock it in edition. Let's take a look at a couple of things here uh, in the top of this draft. Are you convinced that Kyler Murray is going number one? Yeah, still I am. Uh, the Cardinals are working hard uh, to convince people that perhaps Clinton Williams is going to go, uh, and they like him better. And I think uh, I think it's pretty uh, pretty clear that they're just trying to raise uh, the stakes when it comes to what they're going to get back ultimately for Josh Rosen. Uh, but as I said, they're working very, very hard to convince people it's going to be Williams and not Murray. Ultimately, I think they hired Cliff Kingsbury for a reason. He wants him, Kyler Murray, to be the quarterback. Ultimately, I think that's the way they're going to go. Yeah. Well, have we ever mm-hmm. seen a situation where the coach, so much is tied to the coach? I mean, you fired your coach, you kept the GM, you drafted a quarterback last year and yet you're going to draft another quarterback this year. I mean, this coach is entering with a ton of expectations and pressure all at the same time. Yeah, and uh, that's what, you know, he had whatever. He had coffee with Sean McVay at one point in his life. So uh, that's what they're trying to uh, create in Arizona and sort of that exoskeleton type offense of the quarterback who's an extension of the head coach. Uh, big eSports thing going on in Atlantic City soon. I, I think uh, that's sort of the mentality of this new breed of coach. They want uh, a quarterback that's going to be an extension of them. I don't think it ultimately works out, but that's the plan. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, San Fran, Nick Bosa, Jets, Ed Oliver, Quinn and Williams, the Raiders. Now, a lot of people think the Raiders are a total wild card here. Uh, but Bosa, Oliver, Williams, three defensive players back to back to back you have, and then Tampa Bay, Devin White. So four out of the top five, you like defense. Yeah, well, but I also think ultimately somebody's going to trade up as we get closer, uh, and somebody's going to try to get a quarterback. I mean, John Gruden himself, he might take Dwayne Haskins. He'd love to have Kyler Murray. He has no interest in moving forward. I've said this consistently right. for weeks. He has no interest in moving forward with Derek Carr as his quarterback. Uh, he wants a different quarterback. I'm not sure he makes it happen. happen. People understand the Jets want to move down. Uh, the Redskins are in the mix of, of potentially trading up, not only uh, to get ahead of the Raiders for a potential quarterback, but also to get ahead of the New York Giants. Uh, for a potential quarterback and NFC East rival, and those. Hey John, let me let me cut in real quick board. with that. Do you think do you think the bigger wild card is the Raiders at four or what the Giants might do at six? Uh, I think it's the Raiders at four. It seems to be the Raiders are always a wild card. Al Davis isn't uh, with us anymore, but there's something about that organization that does silly things. Uh, and, you know, if they don't get a quarterback, <laughs> it, it, it's I, I could even see him taking T.J. Hawkinson and really blowing everybody up. Uh, the tight end from Iowa, uh, who might be the best tight end prospect in years, but generally you don't see those guys go that high. The Raiders are, let's face it, they're a little crazy. You were thinking perhaps Mike Mayock was going to calm them down a little bit, but he's not in charge. John Gruden's in charge. Clearly, Gruden's in charge. And do the Eagles just keep getting richer with their division, John? (laughs) The Redskins, Dan Snyder taking full control now of the draft tonight. I mean, if you're an Eagles fan, you got to love that. Well, I I don't know if that's true. If it is true, yes, you certainly love that. Uh, Either way, uh, the Eagles. Is that might not be true now? Because that's. Well, it, there was a report in D.C. The Redskins have denied it. Bruce Allen is the one making all the calls. But Wouldn't I mean, you like deny it? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. But Eagles fans, 
to get to the point, yeah, Eagles fans should be thrilled about the division they're in. I tweeted that out. And it's not only uh, the Washington Redskins. It's also the Dallas Cowboys, although uh, Jerry Jones has, to be honest, done some good things in recent years, but still he tends to overextend himself and doesn't listen to his football people at times. Uh, and then the Giants uh, are, are the second-best organization, and people make fun of Dave Gettleman. I, I think that'll slow down a little bit now as they understand that it's not just trading Odell Beckham in a vacuum. Other things happen, and they're going to be adding talent. So I think that'll start to clear up, and the Giants will start going in the right direction. But as a whole, yeah, I mean, this, this is a poorly run division, except for the Eagles. Uh, Giants are mediocre, as I said, at it. Uh, and the other two teams have crazy owners, so it, that helps. <laughs> it, it definitely helps. It feels nice being on the Eagles side of the fence, just looking at the mayhem that's going on, at least within the division. When you look at the Cowboys, John, what do you expect them to do tonight? Well, the Cowboys, remember, they don't have a first-round pick, so they traded. Uh, I mean, in Martin the draft, Cooper, in which, the draft. Yeah, to be honest, I mean, that's that worked out for them. Uh, I, I mean, it's very unlikely uh, that where they were projected to be in the draft as a playoff team, that they would get a, a player of the caliber of Amari Cooper. So uh, he helped them immensely down the stretch. Uh, I, I think his issue with Oakland uh, and the Raiders was, was his lack of consistency. Kind of like everybody didn't know he had significant talent. So... I, I do think you have to keep an eye on him and see if he continues to be consistent. But the early returns on that trade are pretty good. And uh, the Cowboys need to continue to add some skill position people to make things easier for Dak Prescott. It's obviously more difficult when you don't have the first-round pick. For sure. All right, let's fast forward 12 months. And if you have to predict the biggest bust from this draft as far as, listen, it's one year. You can't judge someone within one season. But let's say they do see the field and they don't meet expectations. You, If you have to predict someone that's going to have a letdown career or season and then someone that maybe uh, be selected tonight, that's a little bit of a surprise. Well, I, I think DK Metcalf, but I, I think that was sort of a uh, draft Nick created thing uh he's a phenomenal athlete uh everyone saw the social media pictures and and i think he's got negative body fat uh, i mean he looks like a bodybuilder he plays receiver he runs a 4-4 but his short area quickness is like the queen elizabeth trying to turn around in the ocean i i mean he can't run routes uh, and ultimately, if somebody takes him in the first round, and I think there's a chance he drops out of the first round because NFL yeah. people are smarter than people on Twitter. Uh, but I do think the team <laughs> that gets him is going to be uh, – I do think the team that gets him is going to be – Are they smarter than text messages, though? Are they, yeah, are they smarter yes, than they text are. messages? So. Well, um, and, and by the way, if you use him correctly, it's not to say he can't be a good player because he's going to be able to pop the top on any defense, but you have to use him a certain way, and he's just going to be running go routes all day and stretching the field. Uh, so yeah. as long as you understand that, uh, it may work, but if you're expecting him to be a well-rounded receiver, uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, John McMullen, his final mock is up. A couple quick hits here. Uh, Montez Sweat's interesting to me. He was a guy that I've seen with the Eagles, and then the combine came, so he went flying up draft boards. He was like Mike Mamola. You know, he was going to get drafted in the top five, and now all of a sudden I see you with him at 22. So guys who you think that, um, you know, like who are right flying up boards, dropping down, but he's an interesting guy because I've seen him everywhere from 25 up to five. Well, yeah, and that's because he had he was diagnosed with a heart condition, and now there's a report out today that it's it's fine. He was misdiagnosed. So a lot of what oh boy. Mm. 
Yeah, it, it, with Montez Sweat, it's basically individual teams and how their doctors see it. He could, he's a top ten talent, and he is falling only because of that. The other guy, Rashawn Gary, as well. He's got a shoulder issue. Uh, some people are a little worried. Uh, is creating his own agency to represent himself. So some people are worried about some off the field stuff as well. So he's another guy that I could see uh, was uh, at one point considered to be a top 10 pick. Yeah. That could be a guy who falls to 25, and that would be interesting for the Eagles. If somebody you never hey, uh, expected to be there, and all before, of a sudden uh, we, there. Go ahead. Right, right, exactly. Well, uh, before we get to – uh, who you have going to Philly at 25, and you, you did talk about this player, which I, I think is going to be would be very interesting if that ended up happening because it kind of happened a couple of years ago in the second round, and that guy has really uh, not panned out yet. But uh, are there guys that might not be 25, but the Eagles have their eye on maybe, you know, we'll obviously talk tomorrow, but that they would say, you know, all right, we'll move out of 25 because we like these particular – like, do you think that there, uh, there's some guys that they like but don't like him at 25 and would be willing to get out to take higher up in this second round? Yeah, I, I think there is. And uh, uh, I do think if it goes a certain way and, and some of the players are off the board, uh, the Eagles would want to move down, whether that's just farther down in the first round or even the early second round. I think then you start talking about some of the safeties. Uh, Chauncey yeah. Gardner-Johnson we've talked about a lot. Uh, Savage is, is a guy who I think could go in the first round that nobody expected to go uh, even a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but I, I think you could drop back. The problem is a lot of teams want to drop back because of the tiers of this draft, which basically are top two, Williams, Bosa, then it goes to like 15, uh, and then they think the next 40 players are really close. So if you're in 20 to 30, 20 to 32 range, uh, a lot of teams might think about trading back or want to do that. And the more teams you have that, the more difficult it is because you have to have teams wanting to trade up. So it, 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 it's not just as easy as saying we want to trade down. Sometimes right. you can't and you have to stay put. All right, John, 25, Jeffrey Simmons. And here's a guy who might not play at all, but as Ryan pointed right, out, yeah. and we've talked a lot on the show, that they don't have a lot of needs today. They might have needs tomorrow. Why not take the best player who, yeah, he might not play now, but even whoever we take at 25 might not get a lot of burn. Yeah, and I, Joe Douglas said that uh, at his press conference. He said uh, <laughs> uh, what doesn't look like a need today could be a necessity tomorrow, uh, and I think that might have been a little foreshadowing. Uh, I think there are a few of praise, both Joe Douglas and Howie Roseman for Sidney Jones, who hasn't necessarily worked out to this point, was sort of a redshirt player. Uh, that might have been foreshadowing an interest in, in, in Jeffrey Simmons. Uh, and, and then the fact that he's just really good. And Howie Roseman's about value. Uh, and, it, and that's what I just talked about earlier in the conversation. He, he signed Tim Jernigan, so now you don't need Jeffrey Simmons to play. You can afford to wait for a year. Uh, if he's there, I think the Eagles take him. Problem is, yeah. the Dolphins are interested, and they're way up at 13. So he might not be there. All right, uh, draft tonight. You can uh, hear it all right here on Fold on 97.3 ESPN. The coverage starts at 8 o'clock. John McMullen's pick, Jeffrey Simmons, number 25 to the Eagles. We'll see how that holds. And then, of course, tomorrow we'll recap all of the round one action right here on Football at Four. All right, John, we will uh, certainly be watching tonight. Thanks, pal. All right, say hi to everybody at the Wonder Ball.